Oh, hi, how you doing? And hi, how you doing? Welcome to the wood turning workshop. Yay! You know, sooner or later, you're gonna have a little one like this come into your life, whether you're a father, mother, grandmother, grandfather, and you're gonna wanna make them a toy. And you wanna make that toy educational because what do they do? They eat your food, they use your electricity, they live in your house, and they pee and poop, and you do all the work. So now it's time, oh, I'm sorry. Now it's time to get them to pay you back for living off of your dime for a long time. Stay tuned. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water-cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Tormac, sharpening innovation. When I was little, I remember having a toy just like this. And until later, I figured out it was my dad's sneaky way of getting me ready for mowing the lawn. Matter of fact, that explains the plumber's kit and the little Timmy's roofing kit. Don't even get me started on that one. <laughs> anyway, today's project's really cool. We've built a wheel cage, and inside I've turned some eggs. I use different colors of wood, coca bolo, yellow heart, and purple heart. And as it spins, it makes noise. Parents will really love that. Now the rest of this is made out of curly maple. Pieces that are about one inch thick and a couple of two inch thick pieces. It's really beautiful wood and I really like the look of it. Now we have a lot of pieces to put together and don't worry about that because I've already cut them out and as we go along I'll tell you about the different sizes. The first thing we want to do though is drill a couple holes. Well the tools we're going to be using today, we're going to be using a roughing gouge, a large spindle gouge and a couple smaller spindle gouges, a very small bowl gouge, a parting tool, a set of calipers, and you're going to need a drill press and a bandsaw. Well the holes we're going to drill first are in the wheel and the wheel support and they're half inch holes. And I've got a scrap piece of wood on my drill press right now because we have to drill the hole all the way through and if we didn't do that we'd have tear out coming through the other side. And you can see I have a dimple there which marks the center of my wheel. It's going to go right here, pop it all the way through, good. Now this is the support that holds the axle which holds the wheel, and we also have a hole there. Now the wheel itself is five inches round, and this piece of wood right now is one inch square, seven inches long, and we're going to make a six inch long wheel support out of it. Okay, now, first thing we're going to turn is the wheel, so let's go back to the lathe. I took a little bit of time earlier and I put my chuck on here and turned a waste piece of wood. Now if you look, I have a little tenon right here. Tenon is very critical because it is just a half inch round, but just enough so when I put this on here, it is a tight fit and I can't even get it on all the way. So I'm going to use my tailstock to bring it in and I have a different tip in here. It's a magnetic uh, tip I can replace in and out, nice and flat. I don't want a point or anything on here. So when I put this on here, lock down my tailstock and crank this out, it's going to force that piece of wood on there nice and tight. So now what we're going to do is get a small bowl gouge and round the wheel out so it'll be a round wheel. And there we go. Make sure my speed's turned down, nothing's hitting. Turn this on and bring the speed up. And now we're going to true this up a little bit. I like this little bitty bowl gouge. It's really great for delicate work. Now I'm just taking a nice clean cut across the face, not rushing it. Yeah, we're rounded out. Now I want to come back and just do a pull cut here and start rounding the wheel. I don't want this to be really flat looking. Now we are working with end grain here. So we're going to be leaving some tool marks doing this. I'll come back here, do the same thing. And this pull cut's pretty cool because 
You can't do a push cut on this because the tail stock and the head stock would be in the way. And so by doing a pull cut, I can also do this side before I turn the wheel around. Now, you're gonna wind up with a little bit of rough grain from doing that pull cut. You can see that, well, actually I didn't turn that off yet. But anyway, you can see those little marks right there. That won't sand out. So you need to come back with a shearing cut to get rid of those marks. Now the angle that's swept back on this gouge will help us do the cut. It could be a little bit longer to make this a little bit easier. But you bring this up like so. You barely touch it against it. And you can see some very, very fine shavings coming off right now. And we're just gonna pull this around. And this takes a very, very fine cut. I mean, look at those shavings. And that gets rid of that torn grain. Okay, now it's time to work on this side of the wheel because we want to put a little decoration here. We want to make a nice little cove because if you don't put a cove in there and leave it flat, well, that's wood working, not wood turning. <laughs> anyway, we're going to use our little bowl gouge to do this. And we've got our uh, tool rest set up just a little bit below center. So we've got this moving. We're going to come in here and we're going to start our cove. We want that middle of the hub, this part to be about an inch and a half. It is not exact measurement. We're going to come back in here. Now this is not a real clean cut using the bowl gouge. And one thing I do want to make sure, I want to leave about a half inch right here because that's where we're going to drill the holes that are going to accept the spindles and make the cage for the eggs. Okay, now that's as much as I want to do with the bowl gouge. And we're going to switch tools and we're going to go with this nice round nose scraper. Now the round nose scraper will help us clean up that inside there because it fits that shape perfectly. Just have to raise our tool rest up a little bit above center. There we go. And just take fine little feathers of wood off while we're doing this. Now we're gonna go downhill so we have supported cut and we don't tear any grain out with the scraper. You can see the fine shavings it takes so see we're going downhill again and we're going to blend where the two directions meet there. And you can actually see as it's turning little lines in there and those are the areas of grain you're trying to get cleaned up. Because you don't want to try to have to hand, <laughs> that's really good grammar, you don't want to have to hand sand this <laughs> because it would be a real bear to do that. I mean, we're going to do a little sanding, but you don't want to have to do a lot of sanding. There we go. Okay, I've removed the tail stock. I'm just making a couple of little passes here to clean up the face of the wheel because the tail stock leaves a little bit of a mark when it's pressing up against the wood like that. So now we want to remove this. We're going to flip it over. That's good tight fit still. Put it back on. And we're going to turn this side, and then we're on to our next step. Well, after doing the last bit of the cutting, I went ahead and sanded this to 320 grit, and I drew a 4-inch circle on here. Now, that's very important because we want to make six equally spaced holes on here. And, oh, man, the story behind this. This involves higher math, at least I thought. I called my buddy who's an architect and said, how do you sub subtract? No, divide. A <laughs> wheel up into six equally spaced holes. And he said... 2 pi r. What the heck does that mean? 2 times pi times the radius. I don't know what a radius is. Well, it turns out the radius is the measurement from the center of a circle to the outside of the circle. And then he called me up a little bit later after I'm doing all this math, and he said, oh, I just thought of something. Uh, when you're doing six equally spaced things, which is 60 degrees, you simply take the radius, and that's the distance you need to space your holes. So, 4 inches, we need to make our holes 2 inches apart. So, I set my calipers to 2 inches, and we just pick a nice spot right here, make a mark, come over here, make a mark, we come to that mark, make a mark, and we just keep working our way around the wheel, putting this on the last mark, like so. Now we have six perfectly spaced holes. So let's go to the drill press, because what we want to do now is we're going to drill the holes half inch deep in here and they're half inch wide holes with a half inch drill bit. So 
Let me see here. We'll bring this down. I like to do this. I bring the point in, and right where that cross is, I push. And I have a little dimple. So when I start my hole, it'll go nice. Now, I've already set my drill bit, too, to where it'll only go a half inch deep. It's got a stop on it. So there we go. Now, move to the next one. Uh, dimple it. That looks good. Okay. Drill all these, and then we're back to the lathe. This must be my dynamic personality. You ever known a bald guy to have a bad hair day? <laughs> it's a lot of static electricity in the air today. <laughs> I need a haircut. Anyway, back to the uh, turning. I have my spindle here for the egg cage, and if you notice, I've got a dead center in here that has a spring in it. Pretty cool, and that's going to be very important in just a second. So I'm going to center that up. We're going to bring the other end of our center up here. And I have a 10 inch piece of one inch square stock for our spindle. And 10 inches is the exact measurement we need. Make sure nothing's gonna hit. Well, let's make sure it's unlocked first. <laughs> now nothing's gonna hit. And we're gonna take our roughing gouge, and believe it or not, we're gonna make a half inch wide dowel. And turn that up from my sanding. There we go. You can use a lot of speed when you're spindle turning, because it's not moving that many feet per second in the center here. We're just going to work our way back and reduce this down to close to a half an inch. Then we're going to use our calipers and our parting tool to get to the final diameter that we need. Now with my calipers set to a half inch, I'm going to part in here. I'm going to do it again on this end. I want to make sure that my measurement is at a exactly half inch on this end. Now we're going to come down about a third of the way. Gonna get a little vibration, but it's no big deal right now. So we have those marked. Grab my roughing gouge. And we're gonna start reducing this down to about that size. Okay, we're getting close. Now you notice I'm not touching these other marks just yet because this end of the spindle is going to go into the hole we drilled in the wheel. So I'm going to use my parting tool to bring that down. You can barely see a shadow line there. Okay, I want the shadow line to go away. I'm just going to nibble it, nibble it, nibble it. And once it's gone, hands off. I, I can bring this down just a little bit more right here because you can't put wood back on. So now that looks pretty good. Clean up that end. And now I'm just going to keep working my way down the spindle. I'll make another parting mark here. Now, when you're working with uh, a diameter this thin, you are going to get some vibration. So we're working our way back to be safe. And if you start getting vibration while you're working in the middle here, we're not right now, that's holding up really, really well. You can take your finger and wrap it around here and just use slight pressure coming back. It's not enough pressure to burn yourself. If you caught our episode on the bird, we did the same technique to make the leg. Anyway, I just want to get rid of this bump here. So now we're at a half inch. And it's not critical that we're a perfect half inch here. It is that we're on either end. Okay, now I want to check the fit of the spindle and the wheels. Now this is why I have a spring-loaded center there. I take the pressure off, it stops spinning. This is a production tool so you don't have to turn your lathe off and waste time. But anyway, now I can bring this over here and see if it's gonna fit in the holes on both ends. I'm very close. That's good because, remember, you can never put wood back on. So I'm gonna take this back up, line it back up, get my center to match right here. I'm gonna bring the pressure back up on the tailstock, and look, it's turning. And now I just come back here, and I'm gonna take whispers of wood off this end, Come over here, whispers of wood off this end, and I'm going to check it one more time. I'll keep doing this until I get a nice snug fit in the wheel, and then I'll sand this on the lathe. Really, really close. Just make sure when you're sanding it that you only sand from here out. You don't sand this last quarter inch on either end because you'll screw up your fit then. So after I'm done with this and sand this and finish it, we'll go over to the drill press and start working on another part. That fits pretty good. 
Been doing a little bit of turning off camera, and what I have right now is this is the brace that goes across, and this is the support arm for the wheel. Uh, I went ahead and turned this, and before I turned it as a blank, I drilled two three-quarter inch holes 12 inches apart. This is 15 inches long. Then on the exact opposite side, drilled another three-quarter inch hole to hold the handle. Now, these are about a half inch, a little bit more, five-eighths of an inch deep, so this will seat in there very nicely. Now, this part right here is fairly critical. It's coming out of a single piece of one inch thick wood, one inch square. And so you can see it works like this. It goes on that dowel. And I've got this to the right size. Now I just need to take it back to the lathe. And I'm going to continue working on the shape a little bit because rather than making it three quarters of an inch all the way across, I want to save as much wood as possible. So I've got the thickness I need. And I'm going to start curving this down a little bit using my roughing gouge. So I'm going to come here and gently blend in to this point right here where I have the tenon. Okay. Now that's done. You can see I saved a little bit of size on the wood. Now that mark is where I want to round off the end using my detail spindle gouge because we don't want any sharp points on this because little kids are going to be using it. So we're going to round off everything, make it nice and gentle in case you run into it. Also, again, if we didn't round it off, it'd be wood working and not wood turning. Now for my next trick, woo, we're going to make an egg. Well, we're going to make three of them actually. They go inside the wheel and make all that wonderful noise for the kids. And what better template to have than nature's own egg. So I have a piece of yellow heart mounted here in the lathe and we use this. Oh, <laughs> it was supposed to be hard boiled. <laughs> Melinda! <laughs> Okay. Oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna get her for this. It was supposed to be hard boiled. <laughs> Who says wives don't have a sense of humor? <sighs> you gonna help? No. <laughs> <laughs> I get to watch. Yeah. Oh man. Hey, it blends in with the yellow heart. <laughs> Ew. Well, for my next trick, we're going to use a wooden egg that I already turned. Okay, we have our piece of yellow heart mounted in the lathe. It's a really cool wood, very nice color. We're going to just take our egg we've already turned and just make a mark so we know where the end of it should be. We're going to make the small end over here. Just make sure that this is about an inch and a half minimum in diameter because you don't want it falling through the uh, slots or the uh, spindles uh, on the wheels that hold the eggs inside. So an egg is really cool in one respect that it can be about any shape you want as long as one end is smaller than the other. And thank goodness this is yellow art. All that yolk kind of blended right in. Now the mark is telling me where the end of the egg is, so I'm going to use a parting tool and just part down a ways. That way I know on where I need to wind up. And I've switched to a smaller regular grind spindle gouge to make this curve. It is a bead, an egg is a bead. You got to sneak up on it. We're looking pretty good. I just want to accelerate the end in there a little bit. So come down, take some of that extra wood out, and keep working on this. And once I get it the shape I want, which I'm really close to it, I'll sand it, and then we'll part it off. Okay, we're working on the handle now. This is a nine inch long piece of one and a half inch square wood. And we rounded it down to one and a quarter inches in this area. Now, with this hole rotating around here, be very careful. Don't touch it with your fingers. And when you're sanding, you know, go over it lightly. Because that would hurt if you got your finger caught in that. But the other thing is, is I'm now 
reducing this down to about an inch in diameter because we're gonna have little bitty hands holding this. And they won't be able to reach around that inch and a quarter thickness. So I'm gonna keep shaping this. And once I have it shaped, I'll sand it. And then I'll make some nice little knobby ends on here and take it over to the bandsaw and trim off the excess wood. And the reason I'm making these trips to the bandsaw is because I have to leave the wood longer than I need because these centers put points in the end and they would show if I tried to make this the exact same length, exact length I need it while it's on the lake. Hey, now if you want your lawnmower to move, it's got to have axles. And that's kind of a critical stage because this has to work perfectly. What I've been working on is an axle, and I have this one done already where it's a jam fit onto here. However, this has to be able to rotate freely like that. Well, how do we accomplish that? Well, what it is, I turn this down to size and it fits jam fit. You can see here I turn this way down so I can bring my axle over here and check this. This is all a jam fit too. What I have to do right now is just take some 100 grit sandpaper and we're going to just gently sand that down a little bit and it will slip inside of that axle for a nice smooth fit but not too tight of a fit either. So what I'll do is then I'll just round this end down so it won't have any sharp edges. <laughs> Looks challenging, doesn't it? This is the last piece that we have to turn. 19 inches long, cut from a one inch, actually slightly less than one inch square piece of uh, maple. Now you can do this. There will be some vibration, but if you just take gentle, light cuts, see it's holding together pretty good. You can hear the vibration, so I just lighten up a little bit and keep turning. And one trick you can do is once you get a little bit rounded, you can take your finger and put it over the side. It does kill the vibration, but at the same time, you can feel that it's not quite rounded out, so you feel a little thumping on your fingers to do this. So you keep working your way down until that thumping goes away. And it's almost smooth, almost not quite there. There we go, I can feel it smoothing out under my finger now. Okay, so I'm gonna keep working my way back to the headstock this way. And once I get there, I'm going to measure on each end and cut tenons that are three quarters of an inch wide, just like we've done on other parts, and make sure they fit into the handles and the cross brace for the wheels. And then we're on to our next step. Well, guess what? We're finally done with all the turning. Now we just have to do a little cleanup work and we'll be ready for assembly. So all these little extra ends I had on there, we're gonna nip them off on the bandsaw, and with a little bit of hand sanding, we'll clean them up, and then we're on to the fun part. Well, before I glue this thing up, I wanna test to make sure everything fits well. Hope I can get it back apart again. Um, when you do this and you put a finish on here and you're ready to go, make sure you put your eggs inside before you add the top or you'll be in a lot of trouble. And, um, oh, this is gonna be so easy, this part. Ah, yeah, that worked well. <laughs> Okay, okay, we'll try it like this. Even though the eggs are in the way, we might be able to get it to work better. I had a lot of fun putting the first one together. So, gently tap. Matter of fact, I got a waste piece of wood here I'm gonna use to help me tap so I don't mess things up. But trust me, this all goes together. Really simply, really beautifully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ah. <laughs> Well, I saved you the pain of watching me get that done. Well, the rest of the assembly is pretty easy, except for the axle part. And when you put the axle holders on there, run a dowel rod through it as you line it up because you don't want them crooked, because if they're crooked, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, so we're gonna take our pins and run them through here, and run them through here. Okay, because remember we have that almost perfect jam fit. So we come into here, hold the axle on, and we get that to feed into, there we go, into the wheel. We attempt to get it to feed <laughs> into the wheel. Okay, we tap it, okay? Now we tap it through until it comes out flush on this side for a nice fit. But once we get that done, we wind up with this beautiful project. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of steps, a little bit complicated, but it really turned out well. So until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning. And now, the training begins. 
Let's see. That's the way a mower sounds, you're right. Okay, we're gonna make nice straight lines, okay? Exactly, straight lines, and then we're gonna cross hatch to make it look good. And then you know what you're gonna get to do? We're gonna have you trim the yard, okay? You're gonna trim the yard. Okay, so you ready to get started on this? Huh? Here you go. What? Oh, you like the camera a lot better than Hagen. I see. Hagen, you've got competition. <laughs> <laughs> the Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Torment. Sharpening innovation. Next time on the Wood Turning Workshop. I'm going to show you how to make a really cool project out of green branch wood. <laughs> it is such a joy cutting green wood as compared to dried wood. You just have to be so careful at this point that you don't get a catch. I'm glad we're done with it because my nerves are shot. <laughs> For more information about the Wood Turning Workshop, visit our website at rsupublictv.org. Why do you think I do this for a living? <laughs> oh, you're so good. Okay, now we've got you. Your motor started. Okay, now that your motor started, <laughs> it was supposed to be hard boiled. I said, Melinda, you got any hard boiled eggs? Yeah, we got lots of hard boiled eggs. I guess I didn't say give me one, I just got an egg. <laughs> to purchase a copy of this program, please call 1 800 823 7210 or visit our website, rsupublictv.org. Oh, hey, this week on the Wood Turning Workshop, we're going to make her a great little toy. It's going to be a lot of fun, right? Ooh, hi. So see, we're going downhill again. You can hear the vibration, so I just lighten up a little bit. We're looking pretty good. I remember having a toy just like this. And until later, I figured out it was my dad's sneaky way of getting me ready for mowing the lawn. 